Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. Today I'm going to take a brief aside into a very basic circuit, the voltage divider. This is stuff you'll see in the first week of an electronics class, but I know a lot of folks on YouTube haven't had an electronics class and I didn't want to have to repeat this material every time. If you're already comfortable with both analyzing and designing voltage dividers, feel free to skip this episode. I'm not going to go over anything really new. A voltage divider is just a network with a couple of resistors. You have some source of voltage coming in, and you get a smaller voltage coming out. We'll soon get some shortcuts for the calculation, but right now let's analyze this circuit with Ohm's and Kirchhoff's laws. Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the current in the top resistor is equal to the current in the bottom resistor. Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the voltage across the top resistor plus the voltage across the bottom resistor is equal to the input voltage. And Ohm's law relates the voltages and currents in the two resistors. Okay, let's calculate. And we've just proven a fact that you probably knew already. Two resistors connected in series behave like a single resistor whose value is the sum of their values. Solve for the current and substitute the current back into the equation for the output voltage. And here we have the equation for how a voltage divider acts. It multiplies the input voltage by some constant that's less than 1. You can think of it as an amplifier with a gain less than 1. An unamplifier, if you will. I'll assign the symbol A to the value R2 over the quantity R1 plus R2. This ratio is one of the basic things to keep in mind when you're designing or analyzing a voltage divider. Young players often make the mistake of trying to use something just like R1 over R2, and you can do it that way, but the algebra gets considerably messier. Of course, this voltage output is only valid if there's no load on the circuit. That's fine if we're driving something close to an ideal op amp, for instance. But often we'll want to drive some load that consumes current. To see what happens if the output is driving another resistor, let's invoke a result called Thevenin's theorem. Thevenin's theorem states that any network of resistors, voltage sources, and current sources can be replaced with a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. Whatever load you give it, it'll behave the same way as the original. So what are this voltage and this resistance? Well, we've computed the voltage already. It's just the open circuit output voltage of the original network. To find the equivalent resistance, consider what the divider will do if we measure the output current into a short circuit. The current through the lower resistor will be zero because it's shorted out. Applying Ohm's law gives the value of the output current. Applying Ohm's law again tells us what the resistance has to be in the Thévenin equivalent to give the same output current. Let's calculate some more. Look at that. The equivalent resistance is the value of two resistors in parallel. Now we can begin to see why thinking of the division ratio can simplify the calculation. A little bit of algebra will show that the resistances all relate with simple expressions if we collapse out the division ratio. A common use for a voltage divider is to translate from one range of voltages to another. For instance, we might want to translate a 5 volt logic signal to a plus or minus 1 volt square wave for sending off board. We have formulas that will relate the two resistors to the input and output voltages. Let's denote the high ends of the input and output voltages ranges by V sub IH and V sub OH, and the low ends by V sub IL and V sub OL. Subtract the two output voltages, and a formula for the division factor falls out. And one of the equations above gives us the unknown voltage V sub X. We can choose one of the resistors arbitrarily, and we have a formula for the other one. Let's fill in some real numbers here. We said that our input was a 5 volt logic signal, and we wanted a minus 1 to plus 1 volt signal as the output. That gives us the value of gain, and the voltage that we have to supply to the other leg of the divider. We'll choose 100k as the value of R1, and the last equation on the left gives us the value of R2. But I don't have a 1 and 2 thirds volt power supply. Do I need to build one? Well, maybe, if I'm trying for the utmost precision or something. 
but it's common to solve this problem with a three resistor network using whatever power rails you have available. Let's go to a fresh board and see how. Here's the divider that we have so far. It needs a source of one and two thirds volt power. Of course, I don't have such a beast. You've probably already figured out what we're going to do about this. We'll take the leg of the divider that goes to the weird voltage and replace it with a voltage divider that uses the power supplies that we do have and is the Tevena equivalent. I'll call the power supplies V sub CC and V sub EE because I'm a caveman and still think in terms of powering BJTs. Feel free to call them V sub DD and V sub SS if you like. We've already derived the equations for Tevena voltage and resistance. So now let's solve for the division ratio. That was easy. And now the two resistors are trivial to find. Just substitute back into the second equation. Time to fill in the real numbers again. I have plus and minus 12 volt supplies for running op amps. And I need the given Tevena equivalent voltage and resistance. I need a division ratio of 0.571. The top resistor has to be about 155K and the bottom one has to be about 117K. The nearest standard 5% values are 160K and 120K, and I'll go with those. Now let's go back to the circuit we started with and substitute R2 with the resistor pair we just calculated. That looks like the divider we need. But before I go down to the cave and breadboard it, let me check my work by analyzing the circuit a different way. To check the work, I'm going to compute the output voltage of our network with a technique called Milman's theorem. Milman's theorem is most easily stated in terms of conductance. Conductance is just the reciprocal of resistance and is usually written with the letter G. It's measured in Siemens, which are the reciprocal of ohms. Milman's theorem states that the Tevena equivalent conductance of this network is just the sum of conductances of the individual resistors. Milman's theorem then states that the Tevena equivalent voltage is the sum of the individual currents through each resistor divided by the Tevena equivalent conductance. It's not too hard to prove this using the same methods that we used for the two resistor divider, looking at the open circuit output voltage and short circuit output current. Now let's go back to the circuit that we just designed. Here are the resistance values that we chose. Take the reciprocals of all three resistances to give conductances. And let's not forget the power supply voltages. Write out the Milman equation for the Tevena voltage. Fill in all the known values and do the arithmetic. Plug in the 0 to 5 volt input range, and I get output voltages within a couple percent of the desired values. Not too bad for starting out with 5% resistor values. But I've only calculated these output voltages. That means nothing. I have to go down to the cave, breadboard these three resistors, hook up a voltage source, and measure what the output really is. But before I go, I ought to mention another equivalent formulation, Norton's theorem. To get the Norton circuit equivalent, we start with the Tevena equivalent, replace the voltage source with the current source, and the serial resistor with the parallel resistor. It's not too hard to show that the Norton resistance is the same as the Tevena resistance, and Ohm's law will give us the Norton current. We'll most likely use the Norton equivalent in some future episode, where I'll be introducing operational transconductance amplifiers, a circuit block where some of the signals are currents rather than voltages. But that's not what I'm doing today. Instead, I'm going down to the cave to breadboard a divider. So here I've hooked up that three resistor network. I've got 100K going to its input. I've got 160K going up to the 12 volt supply. And I've got 120K going down to the minus 12 volt supply. The yellow meter is looking at the input voltage and the blue meter is looking at the output voltage. Do I get extra style points for building a variable voltage source 
out of 741 op amp with a 1978 to date code. So my two meters are showing the input and output voltage. With the input very close to ground, the output's quite close to minus one volt. And as I increase the input voltage, the output voltage goes up smoothly. When the input is very close to 5 volts, the output is very close to plus 1 volt. So I think I've got that voltage translation working pretty well. So, I think we're on pretty solid ground with translating one voltage range to another using a voltage divider. In the next episode, I'll be using a divider to make a Schmidt trigger with specified trip points. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, stay safe. Stay healthy and stay curious.